CBS News foreign affairs correspondent Margaret Brennan at the White House. And again, uh, Margaret, uh, he, the, both uh, the prime minister and the president touched on a variety of topics, but it certainly seemed once again as though uh, the most, most biting remarks uh, by the president were certainly safe for Donald Trump. Yes, well, the Italian Prime Minister Matteo Renzi, who's facing a tough referendum in December himself, made a joke that the American journalists and even the Italians are more interested in the results of the November 8th U.S. presidential election than they are in their own politics right now, giving you a sense of just uh, the eyes of the world really focus very much on what happens over the next few weeks going into the U.S. presidential election. The president did fire back, particularly uh, on two issues, mainly based around the uh, questions that Donald Trump has raised about election rigging in the United States. Uh, the president said that's just not based on fact. Uh, when you look at state by state how local authorities regulate elections, it would be next to impossible, he said, to actually try to uh, really throw an election, as Donald Trump has alleged and called on his supporters to go out and self-monitor uh, the polls. Obviously, there's concern about what could happen if you do have people taking upon themselves uh, to do just that. The president also, though, touched on Russia and Russia's uh, alleged interference with the U.S. election, which is something that his administration and U.S. intelligence has said is uh, being attempted right now by the highest levels of the Russian government. Uh, but President Obama really tried to walk a, a careful line there saying, look, we have reached out to Russia. Before Putin was in office, we reached out to his predecessor. That didn't work because when Putin came back in, we saw him invade Ukraine. We saw his actions in Syria and basically said, we don't have a partner here, though we would like to work with one if he changed his tune. So the president really there uh, shooting down one of the criticisms Donald Trump has raised on the campaign trail. Uh, Donald Trump said that he would meet with Vladimir Putin before he was even inaugurated should he win the election. Uh, President Obama saying, be careful there because you're not recognizing what people in your own party, the Republican Party, are saying here about Russia violating international law, carrying out war crimes, uh, trying to annex other countries, vast uh, uh, human rights violations really went through a litany of why the U.S. and Russia are at odds right now, saying this wasn't a lack of trying to resolve issues with Vladimir Putin. This was Vladimir Putin rejecting the rules of the game. So it, it was an interesting uh, mix there, very much centered around the U.S. election. But, uh, Josh, just to give you an idea, this is always about election politics because Matteo Renzi did just get that shot in the arm standing here in the Rose Garden of the White House today uh, before he faces his own tough referendum in December. He will be uh, the last head of state honored at a state dinner by the Obama White House. And that may have something to do with the fact that some of President Obama's own campaign advisors are, are working with him to try to strategize how to reform his country's own bureaucracy as Europe faces a massive economic and migrant crisis. And certainly, uh, again, the strategic importance of the uh, Mediterranean area was something that he spoke to, as well as you've mentioned this tough referendum. Uh, not only does Renzi's political future seem to uh, hang here in the balance, but Italy's future in the Eurozone would seem to as well. Uh, very quickly, uh, I, I was also struck by uh, those two points you mentioned, both with regard to uh, Donald Trump's uh, discussing the uh, alleged rigging of this election and his uh, uh, his courting of Vladimir Putin, if you will. It also seemed the president, Margaret, was willing to shake the GOP cage on both points. At one point, discussing the idea of rigged elections, saying, uh, and I saw a piece in the LA Times yesterday that noted this as well, that in many of the battleground states, it'll be GOP leadership uh, running those electoral machines on election day. And then uh, when it came to, uh, as you mentioned, uh, with regard to Vladimir Putin, saying that uh, Trump's uh, positions here are out of step with many long-standing uh, positions of GOP leadership, as if to well, if nothing else, uh, continue uh, continue to to rattle that saber and perhaps uh, create what really seems a sense of, of infighting that has subsumed so much of this uh, last week or so on the trail. Well, President Obama said he'd be more restrained in his language standing here at the White House than he is when he hits the campaign trail. But uh, he quickly picked up the momentum there. And, and as you uh, suggest, he did make a point of not just linking the dangerous rhetoric of Donald Trump in terms of what he called, um, you know, idealizing or courting Vladimir Putin and his politics and policies, but also 
tried to link that directly to the Republican Party and, of course, those down ballot elections. Remember, this is not just a race for the White House. There's also some hard fought uh, elections on congressional basis that the Democrats and the Republicans are very much concerned, regardless of who wins the presidency, who will be holding the majority uh, in Congress will help to determine what is possible for whoever is elected uh, the next president. So the President Obama did a link saying, look, GOP leaders, you're backing this nominee for the presidency who is doing things that violate what you say you yourself stand for. Uh, so he's going to continue to repeat that on the campaign trail. It's also interesting, given the other conversation about the migrant crisis that came up, that it is, uh, the Obama administration would argue, Russia's bombing campaign in Syria and its targeting of civilians that has driven out so many refugees from Syria into Europe. So really, for the White House, they see Vladimir Putin as at the heart of so many of the crises that the next president will face and that this president continues to struggle with. So for them, raising these questions about uh, how you could possibly be endorsing the idea or reaching out to Vladimir Putin uh, is something you're likely to hear more and more. And we didn't even get into what the U.S. response to that Russian hacking could be. The president stayed away from that. Uh, certainly, again, uh, it wasn't just another press conference before just another state dinner, I think it's fair to say. Mark or Brendan there at the White House. Uh, appreciate your insights.